Welcome back to Vlogs of History. I'm your host, Darius Cousin, and today we're talking about an event that had a very tragic impact on our history. As much as I don't like talking about genocide, I feel that it's important to discuss these things and be aware of what happened. So this week's subject is the Rwandan Genocide. The Rwandan Genocide started on April 6, 1994 in Rwanda, Africa. Lasting only 100 days, about 800,000 people were killed, making this one of the fastest genocides in history. The genocide was caused between a division of two ethnic groups in Rwanda, the Tutsis and the Hutus. The targets of the genocide were mainly Tutsis and non-extremist Hutus. Before we get into the actual details of the genocide, I feel that it's important to have a little background information as to what happened that led to this genocide. Rwanda was a colony of Belgium up until the 20th century. The Belgians, while well, they favored the Tutsis, even though the Hutus were about 85% of the population, so the Belgians were favoring a minority. The Belgians had given the Tutsis power, even though they were a minority, and in 1959, the Hutus, well, they started a rebellion and actually took power from the Tutsis. This caused about 300,000 Tutsis to leave the country, and because they were already in such low numbers, well, this didn't really help their situation at all. Two years later, Belgium officially granted independence to Rwanda. Fast forward a few decades later, the tensions between the two ethnicities, well, they carried on. Some of those 300,000 Tutsis that left the country formed their own rebellion group called the Rwandan Patriotic Front, or RPTs, in an attempt to fight the Hutus. On April 6, 1994, an airplane carrying the two presidents of Rwanda at the time was shot down. Both presidents were Hutus, and actually nobody knows who shot down the plane, it's still unknown. The RPF obviously blamed the Hutus, saying they just wanted an excuse to kill people, and the Hutus, well, they blamed the RPF and started killing Tutsis immediately. This was the start of the Rwandan genocide. During the next 100 days, the Hutu militia would go on to kill about 800,000 people. That's an average of about 8,000 people a day, making this one of the fastest genocides in history. I mean, can you imagine 8,000 people a day being killed? The Hutus quickly took over Rwandan's capital and blocked every road, checking every car and killing any Tutsis that they found. They then went on house by house searching for Tutsis and killing everybody. Nobody was spared, not even children, not even women. Radio propaganda became increasingly common in Rwanda, most of it being hate crimes and urging people to kill their neighbors, their wives, their friends just because they were Tutsis. You really had two choices, either you kill a Tutsi or you get killed because of not having killed a Tutsi. People were very afraid, obviously. Husbands would kill their wives, friends would kill their neighbors just because they were afraid of being killed themselves for not having killed a Tutsi. Even priests and nuns were killed because of suspicion that they were hiding Tutsis in their churches. Not only were the Tutsis being killed, but the moderate Hutus, the non-extremists, were also targets of the Hutus. Their thinking was that they wanted to kill anybody who wasn't a Hutu extremist like them because they could potentially stop the genocide. The Hutu extremists, they just really wanted the reason to kill, so it seems. Some people were able to film what was going on and word of the genocide quickly spread throughout the country. The Tutsis, well, they tried to flee or hide, but they were severely outnumbered. Remember, it was 85 against 15%. There wasn't much that they could do. They could only rely on the United Nations who had some troops handy nearby that were able to help. The problem though was that the United Nations did not have enough troops to actually help prevent the genocide. More so, they weren't even allowed to use their weapons to protect the civilians. They were only allowed to use them in self-defense. By April 21st, that's just 15 days after the genocide started, the UN had pulled out about 90% of their troops out of Rwanda. Instead of helping the Rwandan people who were in very much need of help, the UN decided to pull out their troops to protect their troops from being killed. A few weeks later, the UN realized that they made a mistake and that they should send more troops to Rwanda, and so they made a plan to send about 5,000 troops to Rwanda. The unfortunate catch was that it took way too long for the troops to actually get there. By the time the full force had gotten there, the genocide was already over by a long time. Eventually, the Ugandan army joined the RPF in fighting the extremist Hutus. Bit by bit, they started taking back control in small parts of Rwanda. Finally, on July 4th, 1994, they took control of the capital. After the shift in power, about 2 million Hutus left the country in fear of being killed by the RPF who was quickly taken over again. This group included about 1.4 million Hutus who had nothing to do with the genocide. Remember, it was only the Hutu extremists who were doing the mass killings. According to some sources, the RPF is said to have killed thousands of Hutus on their quest back to power. The RPF, well, they deny this. Rwanda's population was severely affected by this genocide, obviously. Before the genocide, you had about 1 million Tutsis living in Rwanda, and after the genocide, there were only about 300,000 left. Because of Rwanda's population being affected by the genocide and their infrastructure destroyed, it took them many, many years to actually put people on trial for the crimes they had committed during the genocide. Eventually, they got around to it, and by mid-2006, they had tried over 10,000 people in relation to the genocide. It just really is a shame that while all of this was going on, the world, the international world, did not do anything to help. 
I mean, we're talking about 800,000 people being murdered just because of their ethnicity. They had no choice in the matter. The children weren't even spared and the women before being killed, they were raped violently. I really don't like ending on such a bad note, but I feel that this is something that we should take some time to reflect on. We should reflect on how we could have let something this horrible happen and how we can prevent this from ever happening again. That was it for this week's episode of Vlogs of History. I really do hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you did, leave a like, share it to a friend and subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out. Remember, these episodes come out every single Monday and if you've missed the previous one, I'll leave a link right here, you can go check it out. Also, I do have another show called Vlogs of History After Hours that comes out every single Wednesday, so make sure to check that out too. As always, I'm your host, Darius Kozlin. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I will see you all next week.